sorted. Good morning everyone, welcome to St Mary's Church, Litchum and Travers. My name is Stephen Partridge and uh, here we are again, here we go again. Uh, it's uh, another strange time uh, when I'm here with an empty church, although I've got my fantastic wife Carrie here doing all the uh, technical, uh, technical bits and bobs and uh, we're hoping that everything connects up and we can connect up with you and, and connect with one another. If you want to uh, comment, uh, then you need to be watching this through YouTube uh, and you can use some uh, comments. Is that right, Carrie? Have you got that capability today? So you can say hello through that. But otherwise, uh, it's really good to, to connect up and we can connect up in different ways. I'll put the phone down just in case I get any random WhatsApps. But uh, uh, just honour you really for, for connecting up in this way. It is not how we would, we, we would mostly want to be uh, uh, doing church, as it were, but uh, it's how we can continue our... Uh, connection, connection to God, connection to one another in these times, using uh, prayers that have been prayed over over many, many years. Uh, and we've got some hymns as well that you'd all be able to, to sing today, uh, whereas when you're in church, you, you're not able to. No masks needed as well. So uh, there's swings and roundabouts, but uh, most of all, we look forward to when we can gather back together. Uh, so welcome. Shall we have the opening, opening words? Let's make it properly Anglican. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And we're going to sing our opening hymn now, which uh, Carrie will click on. I've forgotten what it, what it is, but it's... Uh, it's love divine, but not love divine. It's got a lovely tune, and it's, uh, yeah, it's a lovely hymn that, that, that St Martin in the Fields have recorded for.
So let us continue by saying the prayer of preparation together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Collect for today, a day when we remember Jesus' baptism, the first Sunday of Epiphany. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us, who are born again by water and the Spirit, that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we're going to hear our two readings that uh, are going to be brought to us uh, on, uh, on video and, and virtual. I'm trying to remember who it is. I know who it is who's done it. It's, it is Karen. That's right. Karen's going to bring our first reading and then we'll go straight on and Jane will, uh, will bring our second. Karen and Jane. Yes, I did know that. Our first reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 19, verses 1 to 7. While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked, then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptised into the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. We're at Mark chapter 1, starting at verse 4. John the Baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptised by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, One who is more powerful than I is coming after me. 
I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you, Karen and Jane, for our readings. Uh, I'm responsible for the pictures that were added on. That dove looked a bit menacing in that first first reading, but anyway, it uh, kind of is looming in on us, wasn't it? But perhaps that's just me, I'm a bit of a visual, visual person. But anyway, uh, let's pray. Lord, take my words, speak through them, take our minds and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you. In Jesus' name, amen. I wonder whether you, like us, have been watching some of the uh, uh, array, a large array of Christmas movies that have been available uh, on, I think Channel 5 showed quite a few of them, and uh, we've been watching some of them on uh, Amazon Prime and, and Netflix. Uh, apparently there's a, there's a channel that, that kind of churns them out called the Hallmark Channel. and. Um, and the one thing that you, you know about these Christmas movies is that there are going to be no surprises. They are very uh, predictable in, in the fact that there's always going to be some fake snow somewhere probably and uh, someone's going to be drinking hot chocolate and, and eating cookies. It's all set in America, so it's all very, uh, uh, very particular, uh, that, that particular uh, kind of culture is going on. And, uh, and there's, there's always uh, two, two characters who definitely aren't in love at the beginning uh, and they're very different uh, and then by the end well you, you know the, the story it all ends happily ever after um, uh, there's sometimes we, we might want to disagree with the way that, that, that it's portrayed that often it's uh, one of them has to uh, and it, often it's the, the woman who has to give up her, her high-powered job to go and settle down in the country but but we've seen uh, now we've seen quite a few we know there's there is a balance to that as well and often it's the it's the, the man who has to give up all that he, uh, his career for a, for a life painting and, and eating cookies in, the, in a small, small town America somewhere. But anyway, it's very predictable. There are no surprises. Uh, and yet other uh, films or books we read, uh, we may find there is a, a surprise in there somewhere. Now, I'm not a big fan of surprises in terms of someone jumping out or, or watching a film that, that uh, makes me jump. And Carrie's even worse than, than me. But, uh, but a surprise that makes us think uh, is something that, that, I, that I do enjoy, as it were. Uh, it, perhaps in a book or a, in a film, where there's a twist or a, a plot line that takes it down a surprising route, uh, that, that when I'm beginning to, to think about what's going on, uh, I think that is something that is positive and something that I enjoy. And in a, our two passages today that we've had from Acts, and our gospel passage particularly, I want to bring out three surprising things. You may have noted these, or maybe not, but I'm going to share them with you anyway. The first is the surprise in what John is calling. John is calling for all around to come and be baptised. The baptism of repentance uh, in terms of uh, making right their relationship with God. And the surprise is that he's not just calling uh, the Gentiles, who at that time would have been baptised in order to enter uh, the Jewish faith community. He's calling the Jews to come and be baptised as well. And for them, that would have been a big surprise because they felt that they were born into the faith and, and therefore didn't necessarily need to, to make this step. So there's a surprise there in the way that the Jews are being called to, to be baptised alongside the others. The second surprise is that Jesus comes and is also baptised by John it, through, with this baptism of repentance. Jesus, who has nothing to repent of, is still baptised. And that is a surprise uh, as well. 
And the third surprise for me comes in this Acts reading where uh, despite uh, uh, their comparative ministries that we read about in, in the Bible, it's John's ministry and message that seems to have reached Ephesus uh, and inspired these disciples uh, more than Jesus. The story of one who came uh, and preached and baptised in the desert and died seems to have got to this uh, a group in Ephesus uh, before uh, the, the word uh, about Jesus who died and rose again uh, and, and preached uh, good news to the people. Uh, this is about, about 20 years after uh, Jesus has, has died and John had, uh, indeed has died too uh, when Paul is, is journeying. So there's three surprises there, baptism for the Jews, baptism for Jesus and John's message seemed to be having more of an impact. What does this mean for us? Or as we look into these three surprises, the first surprise, the Jews being called into baptism, is about them being called back into this new relationship with God. John is the last, really, of the, of the Old Testament line of prophets, and he's calling the people back, just as the Old Testament prophets did too. And he's encouraging them to own their identity in God, not just to inherit it from their parents or be, be just part of the culture around them, but actually for them to own that themselves, and to come and be baptised through, uh, through the water in repentance in order to enter this new relationship and this uh, new identity with God. The second uh, surprising act, Jesus coming to be baptised. Well, this Again, it's about identity. It's about God confirming uh, an identity on Jesus, for him to be confirmed as the Son of God, to have, that, have the voice of God exclaim, yes, this is my Son, the one whom I love and cherish. Well, in fact, in Mark's Gospel, it's, it just seems to be just for Jesus' ears. Uh, uh, the words in my uh, translation, oh, am I going to be able to find it? No, not very quickly. But uh, it, they are words that just seem to come to Jesus. You are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. There's a theme in Mark of, of this, this, the secret. Jesus being the Messiah is, a, is the secret that, that only uh, gets told uh, later on. And so for Mark, it's just Jesus who hears this uh, identity being confirmed on him. Yes, it's been an identity since he was born, since he was conceived but now it's confirmed by God's voice. It's been revealed to him. So the Jews are stepping into a new identity. Uh, Jesus is being confirmed in his identity as the Son of God. Uh, and the final surprise, uh, this incomplete teaching and baptism that those disciples of John have received, uh, again is about identity and it's about them finding their identity, not just in an outward act of uh, baptism, not just in a, an outward uh, 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 witness to say, yes, we, we repent of, of what we've done, and we're looking forward to something uh, new, which was John's message. But when Paul comes to these disciples, uh, prays over them, uh, 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 and uh, lays hands on them, they are then uh, internally identified, as it were. They, re they, they obtain a, a, an internal identity by the Holy Spirit. Yes, it's, uh, 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 there's, a, um, there's a, uh, a link in with the, the Pentecost event uh, as they begin to speak in tongues and the, the Spirit manifests itself in that way. Uh, but what I see here is a, an external identity being internalised. They then carry the Spirit of God in their heart. They've received the Spirit. They're born of the Spirit. And that's really where I wanted to, to, to bring us in to those three surprises are all about uh, identity, as baptism is about our identity in Christ. Baptism establishes our identity. For Jesus, it was about uh, the identity of being the Son of God. Jesus is who God says he is, the Son of God. For us, our baptism reveals our relationship with God. It reveals that we too, just as Jesus is affirmed, are loved and cherished by God and we are seen as his children. We are children of God. 
That is uh, what uh, bat in the baptism we're assured of externally uh, and the coming of the Spirit at that moment of baptism, we are assured internally as well by his Spirit. We are who God says we are, his children. Declared at our baptism, whenever that was, whether it was when we were children or, or indeed when we were uh, grown up, confirmed by the Holy Spirit's infilling. At that point, or maybe before or after, there's a, a lot of discussion about how that goes on. But, but I pray that, that each one of us has been filled with the Spirit and then revealed. And what we see in uh, the Acts uh, passage is, yes, a, a manifestation of the Spirit. Some have said, oh, well, you know, that's, that's the, 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 um, the measure of whether someone is a disciple. I don't think that's true. I think this was quite an unusual event uh, that took place uh, but what it shows is the spirit is about active it's about an active life uh, and when the spirit comes we're drawn in to particular uh, works of service perhaps or or, or given given gifts that enable us uh, to uh, to further god's uh, mission and ministry to to further god's kingdom so our identity as children of God, is revealed at our baptism, confirmed by the Holy Spirit's infilling uh, and uh, uh, revealed by the spirit, a Spirit-filled life where God's love overflows from us. And that's what I'd encourage us to, to retain that knowledge of our identity today. Uh, and uh, I'm going to play through a song in a moment that speaks about God uh, saying we are, uh, we are his children. It's his words uh, and we can trust them uh, and be assured in that. But let's pray first of all. Heavenly Father, we thank you that in baptism we have been welcomed into your family, welcomed as children of God. May we know that each of us in our hearts by your Spirit. And however that works its way out, would you uh, uh, reassure us of that today, just as you reassured Jesus as his, of, of his identity as the Son of God, just as you assured uh, those first Jews who came to be baptised by John, you assured them of their relationship with you. And just as you confirmed to those disciples of John in Ephesus that when we are filled with the Spirit, we are then empowered and encouraged by the Spirit to continue growing your kingdom. In Jesus' name, Amen.
thank you, Father. You welcome us into your home, into your house, into your presence. And you make, you come and make your home in us. By your spirit. So as we continue, let us affirm our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now uh, Riet's going to lead us in our intercession. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you that you aren't an absent God, but still choose to speak to us and guide us, sometimes audibly, but most often through your word or a still, small voice. Dear Holy Spirit, we pray that you will help us to be open to your presence in our lives and to seek your guidance in all we do. Paul encourages us to earnestly seek after the gifts you offer us, and we pray for a real sense of expectation to see what you want to do in and through us at this difficult time. We pray, Lord, particularly for all our frontline workers, for protection, encouragement, stamina and resilience. Thank you for the approval of the third COVID vaccine this week and for all the men and women worldwide who have worked so hard to get to this point. We continue praying for wisdom for our elected leaders as they seek to find the right balance between protecting the vulnerable and protecting the economy and pray that people will be willing to stick to the restrictions placed on us all for the time being. With everything going on all about us, it is easy to do to get despondent or demoralised. Lord Jesus, you warned us that in the world we would have trouble, but to take heart as you have overcome the world. Each day brings us closer to your return to earth and we can only respond to your promise to bring a conclusion and resolution to this troubled world by echoing the Apostle John's words, Come, Lord Jesus. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Ah, perhaps you didn't hear me do the, do the, do the, uh, do, you probably saw the word, well the, word, the words are up, the weren't they? The words are up, but I forgot to turn the video. Oh, Switch okay. The, the sound. Let's go through that again then. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you. And do connect up uh, with those around you. Uh, and to say, uh, this is where we normally take our offertory and have our offertory here, which we're not going to be able to do, clearly. But thank you to those that have found ways of giving uh, to the church, both financially, which has really uh, uh, helped us through this year, but also in terms of time and talents being given, uh, both through the church, but also uh, serving your neighbours uh, and serving others, one another. Um, and to say, uh, the flip side of that is if you are in, in any kind of need, then do, uh, do seek out the help. There's, there's help out there. We've got a wonderful organisation in the village, the Litcher Angels, who are doing great work in terms of helping people uh, uh, collect shopping or, or uh, prescriptions, uh, but also uh, they supply small uh, financial grants as well to those that are struggling. So uh, I do encourage you to, to seek out the help if, if that is something that you need or, or you recognise someone else has need. Obviously, we do that gently and, and carefully uh, and thoughtfully, but, uh, but the help is out there. We're going to move now to a time of communion as we, uh, as we remember Jesus and we remember all that he did and remember the fulfilment of all the prophecies that he completed. What have we got next on the, on the words, Karen? Oh, there we go. And we're going to use communion prayer here. It's nice to mix, up, mix and match a little bit with the liturgy as we go through. Uh, we're in back into a sort of, well, we're in epiphany time at the moment, aren't we? Post Christmas. Oh, I'm going to get all this set up there, isn't I? That's true. He says, chatting on. As I have said before, if you, if you want to uh, have something as a substitute for bread and wine at home, then, then do feel free. Uh, we've had that discussion about technically it won't be consecrated uh, because I can't, can't do that remotely. But uh, if it's uh, meaningful for you, then, then do, do do that. I wouldn't want to stop anyone from uh, doing that. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke it, broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine, and again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence.
his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. It is our tradition at St Mary's here for each one to pray the Lord's Prayer that means the most to them, either the modern form that I will lead us in or a more traditional form that you have in your heart. Do use that if, uh, if you would like to. So as our Saviour taught us so, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one spiritual bread that is Jesus Christ. So draw near to him uh, by faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We say together, we do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. shed for each one of us. time and eternity. You opened the heavens and revealed yourself as Father in the baptism of Jesus, your beloved Son. By the power of your Spirit, complete the heavenly work of our rebirth through the waters of the new creation, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we say together, 
Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to hear our final hymn now. God is working his purpose out. I was listening to the, to the lyrics of this, and I thought it was... It was a good hymn for today. Uh, and there's a bit about creation later on and, and, and uh, linking in with planting and farming because I think today is also known as Plough Sunday, which we haven't uh, alluded to much, but there seems to be a little thread running through in this, uh, in this hymn uh, reminding us of, of, of what is going on in the, in the wider world. So uh, let's sing. So uh, as we come to close before our, our blessing, uh, before we receive God's blessing, just a few notices, wouldn't be a church service without some notices, uh, to say at 10.30 we've got a virtual uh, coffee time on Zoom for those that uh, 
I've got the the link uh, through our. Um, uh, well, it was on the news sheet. That's right, which went out uh, yesterday morning, and I think I sent the link as well on the email yesterday evening. So do join Sheila and Bob are hosting that. I'm surely pleased to see you. Just got time to make a coffee, uh, and then uh, uh, get to get your computers on. That's 10:30 till probably for, for half an hour or so. At, at 11 o'clock, uh, it's our second Sunday, and, and one of the things that we we've had in the past for our second Sunday is a, 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 a the op opportunity to receive prayer ministry from someone. Normally, it would be someone uh, uh, stationed up here in the chancel behind me, but obviously. We are not able to do that, but but there is someone on the end of the phone who, who if you want to phone, and that'll be uh, this week. Uh, Jane Catley is taking that uh, that role. So if you want to phone Jane, her number's in the prayer directory, uh, and uh, if you want to give her a ring, she'd be pleased to to pray with you. Whether it's a prayer uh, to give thanks for something or or for for prayer for something else, all that is confidential, uh, of course. Uh, but the option is there between eleven and eleven thirty. Of course, you can phone other people as well. I'm sure many people would, would, would be willing to pray with you. But Jane is particularly there, uh, uh, standing for our, our prayer ministry that, that we're not able to, to, to do uh, at the moment. Uh, and uh, so that's a phone call. We've got the virtual coffee on Zoom. And then at the other thing at 11 o'clock is our At 11 is going on Zoom this week as well. I'm not quite sure what possessed me to, to organise that. But uh, uh, we, we've done YouTube, we've done Facebook Live, and now we're trying out a zoom uh, a zoom service it will be fairly short because i've only got free zoom so it'll be 30 30 35 minutes but uh, uh do pray that that works out and again if you've got the link do join us if you haven't let me know and i can i can send that that link out to you uh, oh yeah and sheila and sheila says if you've got any trouble getting onto the zoom for the her and bob's coffee zoom then give her a call and she'll help you talk talk you in Next week, we'll, we'll continue at the moment. We'll have our eight o'clock here in the church and that'll be live stream as well. Uh, and then um, we'll be uh, just online for the 9.30 and the, at 11. Uh, I just encourage you to stay safe uh, and stay connected. Uh, I look forward to connecting up with you soon. Let's receive God's blessing as we close. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us and those we love and pray for now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Pop on the bells, Carrie.